Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about Wuchiriria bankrupti. This is a continuation of the parasitology series Parasitidin nematodes. If you haven't watched the videos on introduction to parasites or introduction to nematodes, their links are in the description or may be floating in the top right corner. Before starting the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get into it. Wuchiruria bankrupti. It is a tissue nematode. It is responsible for causing filariasis. There are at least eight filarial worms that are important to human beings. But th in this video, I'm going to discuss Wuchiruria bankrupti and a little bit about Bergia mela that is a call common in Malaysia and some areas around the equator of the world. Bergia mela is one of the causative agents of lymphatic filariasis. The, the only difference between Bergia mela and the Wuchiriria bancrofti is that they have different mosquito vectors, but they have very, very similar life cycles. And another difference can be that the lateral caudal papilla in the Bergia meli have an indentation around their bases, which is absent in Wuchereria bancrofti. Elephantiasis is a striking feature of this disease, the filariasis. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is an immediate hypersensitivity reaction to Wuchereria bancrofti in the lung. In this picture, you can see this worm. It is filled with the nuclei, the circular, uh, you can visualize them in the purple color, but the tail is empty. We'll discuss why is it so in the morphology section. Lecture outline, I have introduced you guys to the Wuchereria bancrofti. Now we'll know how does it look, like its morphology, then its habitat and transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, and finally the prevention. Morphology. There are actually three forms of Wuchereria bancrofti that exist in its life cycle, but we are going to discuss just two in morphology section. First one is lava, second one is microfilaria, and third one is adult worm. Let's start with microfilaria. It has got two forms. One is unstained and one is stained. We'll discuss about which stain is being used uh, in the stained one, but let's talk about unstained first. The unstained microfilaria is colorless. It means they have transparent bodies with blunt heads and pointed tails. These microfilaria vary in size from 290 micrometers by 6 to 7 micrometers. Stained microfilaria. It is stained with Romanowski's stain. What is it? It's a neutral stain composed of mixture of oxidized methylene blue, azure, and oxidized methylene blue dyes and eosin Y. Romanowski stain is used to differentiate cells for microscopic examination in pathologic specimens to detect parasites. Uh, these filaria has got the hyaline sheath as their outer covering, a cuticle, and somatic cells or nuclei appearing as granules. Granules do not extend up to the tip of the tail. An anterior end is devoid of granules. Lava. The infective stage um, is lava introduced by mosquito in the human beings. But the diagnostic stage is quite different from the infective stage that the microfilaria produced by the adult worms of Wuchereria bancrofti in the human beings. As they are present in the blood, so taking a sample of blood and making a blood smear and visualizing it under the microscope will make it easy for us to diagnose it. But the infective stage is always the larva that is present inside the mosquito's proboscis. When the mosquito bites any human, it introduces that larva into the human body, which is responsible for causing infection. Adult worm of Fucheria bancrofti. Shape. It is long and slender. 
hair-like or filiform means it is thread-like. It tapers at both ends. Size. As for all nematodes, female is larger than the male. What does that mean? That male is shorter in length as compared to female. Male is 2.5 to 4 cm for Wuchereria bancrofti, while the female is 8 to 10 cm. Color. Transparent or sometimes they appear as creamy white. Structure of the adult worm. It has got two ends. The head end and the tail end. The head end terminates in slightly rounded swelling. While the tail end is different for the male and the female. For male, it is curved ventrally containing two specules of unequal length. But for females, it is narrow and abruptly pointed. As you can see in this picture, male is shorter as compared to the female. This is the head end of both and this is the tail end. Look at the tail end of the male. That is curved. And the tail end of the female is straight and narrow as compared to male. And the tail end of male has got these two specules. They have got different organs of reproduction. For female, it is female reproductive organs. And for males, these are going to be the male reproductive organs. And some um, GI stuff there like pharynx, esophagus, and so on and so forth. Habitat. Hosts. The definitive hosts for Wuchereria bancrofti are human beings. Intermediate hosts. Female mosquito. Um, the species can be Anopheles and Culex, but in some websites and books it was mentioned that Aedes can also be responsible for transferring the microfilaria of Futuraria bancrofti. Transmission. Transmission occurs by female mosquitoes bite and the mosquitoes are Anopheles and Culex. Life cycle. It has two stages, human cycle and mosquito cycle. Human cycle, for the ease of studying, I've divided them into certain stages. First is going to be the entrance of third stage larvae, and the second one is development. We will talk about the stages of larvae in the mosquito cycle. But for now, you should remember that the third stage larvae will enter in human body. Humans are infected when infected female mosquito bites them. Mosquito deposit infected larvae on the skin, punctured skin and the larvae penetrate the skin. Larvae gain excess and enter a lymph node. Settle down at some spots like inguinal, scrotal or abdominal lymph nodes. After one year, these larvae mature to adults and they are sexually mature in 5 to 18 months and adults then produce microfilaria. Microfilaria enter venous systems via thoracic or right lymphatic ducts. Microfilaria then circulate in blood, especially at night. If mosquito bites again, the mosquito is going to ingest those microfilaria and mosquito cycle will start there. Summary of human cycle. Humans are infected when infected female mosquito bites them and deposits infected larvae on the skin. Larvae penetrate the skin, enter the lymph node after one year mature to adults and produce microfilaria, which then circulate in blood, especially at night, ingested by biting mosquitoes leading to the start of the mosquito cycle. Okay, now let's officially start the mosquito cycle. It is further classified into four stages. First one is blood meal, second one is first stage larvae, third one is second stage larvae, and fourth one is third stage larvae. Blood meal. Mosquito ingest sheeted microfilaria. These collect round the anterior end of the stomach and they cast off their sheets quickly. And now they're called as first stage larvae. Then they penetrate the gut wall within one to two hours, migrate to thoracic muscles where they rest and begin to grow. In next two days, they change into thick, short, sausage-shaped forms with a short spiky tail and a rudimentary digestive tract. And now they are called as second stage larvae. In three to seven days, larvae grow rapidly, molds, mean sheds its cuticle, 
wants or toys, to become the third stage larvae. On death or eleventh day, metamorphosis is complete. What is metamorphosis? It is a biological process in which an animal physically develops. So here, this third stage larvae is physically developing. Third stage larvae is formed with tail atrophies to a mere stump, digestive tract, body cavity, fully developed genital organs. These are infective to human, these third stage larvae which enters the proboscis sheath of mosquito on about 14th day. On biting humans, these are introduced in human body and then the human cycle starts and we've already discussed what is human cycle. Summary of mosquito cycle. Microfilariae are ingested by the mosquito. Within the mosquito, microfilariae produce infective larvae, which are then transferred to humans with the next bite. Diagrammatic representation of life cycle of Fortunaria bancrofti. It starts here when female mosquito takes a blood meal and introduces the third stage larvae into the skin of the human. Then these larvae penetrate the skin and to the lymph node. Larvae introduced by the mosquitoes then develop into the adults in the lymphatics of the human body. Then adults produce sheathed microfilariae that migrate into lymph and blood channels. Mosquito takes a blood meal again and ingests these uh, microfilariae. These microfilariae shed their sheets, penetrate the mosquito's midgut and migrate to thoracic muscles and become the first stage larvae, L1 larvae. And then after some time become the second stage larvae and eventually the third stage larvae, the L3 larvae. Then these L3 larvae migrate to the head and the mosquito's proboscis to infect the human. And this is how the mosquito and uh, uh, human cycles are continued. Pathogenesis. Adult worms in the lymph nodes cause inflammation that eventually obstructs the lymphatic vessels, causing edema. And when this is a massive edema of legs, it is termed as elephantiasis. Note that microfilariae do not cause symptoms. Wolbachia species are rickettsia like bacteria found intracellularly within filarial worms or filarial nematodes such as Boucheraria and Onchocerca. Wolbachia release endotoxin-like molecules that are thought to play a role in the pathogenesis of Boucheraria and Onchocerca infections. Evidence for this includes the use of toxicycline, which kills the Wolbachia, resulting in a reduction in the number of microfilaria and in the inflammatory response to the nematode infection. Some symptoms are caused by microfilaria if they are present in the lungs that elicit an immediate hypersensitivity reaction categorized by a high IgE concentration and eosinophilia. Epidemiology The disease occurs in tropical areas of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Um, as I told you in the introduction that Borgia meli occurs in the areas around the equator all around the world, but Wuchereria can also occur in those places. The species of mosquito that acts as vector varies from area to area. Altogether, 200 to 300 million people are infected. Clinical findings. Early infections are asymptomatic. Later, fever, lymphaginitis. What is it? It is the inflammation of lymphatic system. And cellulitis. Cellulitis is common bacterial skin infection. In later stages, along with fever, lymphogenitis and cellulitis develop. Gradually, the obstruction leads to edema and fibrosis of the legs and genitalia especially the scrotum. Massive edema of the legs is termed as elephantiasis. Here you can visualize the massive edema in the legs, termed as elephantiasis. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is characterized by coughing and wheezing, especially at night.
if this disease worsens, certain complications like protein urea, severe pruritus, chronic lymphedema, hydrocele, skin pigmentation, renal impairment like urea can occur. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of feces, blood, serum, and many more like callus, urine, lymphatic exudate, and hydrocell fluid. The thick blood smears taken from the patient at night reveal the microfilariae. Serologic tests are not useful, but complement fixation test. It is a sensitive test for occult filariasis. Sometimes radiology can be done, which may reveal the calcified worms. And a skin test. When the filarial antigens are injected into dermally, they produce an immediate hypersensitivity reaction, which is a positive skin test for Wuchereria bancrofti. As you can visualize the blood smear for this organism here, look at its tail. It has no nuclei in it. Treatment. Diacylcarbamazine is effective only against microfilariae. No drug therapy for adult worms is available. Treatment of patients with butyraria and Onchocerca infections with doxycycline to kill Wolbachia results in a significant decrease in the number of microfilaria in the patient. We can also go for surgery for treating the elephantiasis if it is worsening. Prevention. Prevention involves mosquito control with insecticides and the use of protective clothing, mosquito netting, and mosquito repellents. Alright guys, let's review everything quickly. The organism is Wuchereria bancrofti, its common name is filarial worm, and the disease it is responsible for causing is filariasis. Its mode of transmission is via the bite of female mosquito. The hosts are, the definitive hosts are human beings, while the intermediate ones are the mosquitoes. Endemic areas are tropics primarily, and the primary location they are responsible for causing infection in is the lymph nodes. Um, diagnosis is mainly based on blood smears. Treatment uh, is diethylcarbamazine. Category is tissue nematode. Insect vector is mosquito. Stage that infects human is the larvae. And stage in humans most associated with the disease is adult worms in the lymphatics, responsible for causing elephantiasis. Important stage outside humans is the mosquito that ingests microfilariae from the human blood. And then after completing the mosquito cycle, it introduces the larvae in the human blood. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments section. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials like Instagram, Twitter, and my blog. Till next time, assalamu alaikum.